She's one of the best investigators I have. But? She's different. Uh, in what way? In every way. Something wrong with the report? Anything you chose not to disclose? He's clean, in my opinion. He's honest. My credibility isn't dead yet. Mine is. He's had a long-standing sexual relationship with his co-editor of the magazine. Sometimes he pleasures her. Not often enough, in my opinion. No, you're right not to include that. Welcome, everybody, to What the Flick. Uh, Pat Bankowitz, <laughs> Lanza Duralde, Christy Lemire. I just did this, Hi. but I'm going to go the other way. Matt Atchity. Uh, so, you know uh, who we are by now. I know. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm not doing the, inter no, the no, big no, it's introduction. It's in my contract that my name has to be said. <laughs> Matt Atchity is the, the, the editor-in-chief of Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Perhaps you've heard of him. Uh, three movies said today that are doing well on Rotten Tomatoes. And, yes. Uh, so yes. Uh, let's begin with the uh, girl... Uh, with the uh, with the dragon tattoo, yes. Christy. David Fincher Palooza, two hours and forty minutes of Finchery greatness. Um, this is not exactly a remake of the Swedish original. It's based on the book, the first book in the Millennium Trilogy, if you will. Daniel Craig stars as a disgraced journalist who gets hired by this aging, dying billionaire to investigate a 40-year-old murder. And uh, Rooney Mara is the hot, sexy, bisexual, tatted and pierced hacker who helps him. Take a look. I need your help. You come stay on the island. A way of avoiding all those people you might want to avoid right now. You will be investigating thieves, misers, bullies, the most detestable collection of people that you will ever meet. My family. You failed to adapt to four foster homes. Arrested twice for intoxication, twice for assault. How many partners have you had in the last month? And how many of those were men? I should have control of my money. And you will, once you learn to be sociable. Why don't we start with me? You know what to do. I can't find something you've been unable to find in 40 years. You don't know that. You have a very keen investigative mind. The last time I reported on something without being absolutely sure, I lost my life savings. I need a research assistant. I know an excellent one. She did the background check on you. The what? You don't think we could hire just anyone for something like this? Rape, torture, fire, animals, religion. Am I missing anything? The names. I may have something. Nobody likes people poking around in their lives. Everybody knows why you're here. Someone killed her. Someone on the island that day. If a woman approaches any beast and dies with it, you shall kill the woman and the beast. These people are insane. Soon you will know us all. Always too well. With my apologies. Wow, you are a little. Look at that. I'm not standing on a box. <laughs> yeah. Should I be? It looks like uh, it looks like uh, Matt and Alonzo are standing on boxes. Hi, um, I have things to say too. Oh, I'm down here. By the way, <laughs> by the way as a uh, red-blooded yes, American, let me just now? say, yeah. you can do that all you want. About the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? Here come the cops. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, uh, Alonzo, uh, uh, on Dragon Tattoo, you, I, 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 I'm looking at the numbers. You're going to come in low on this. You didn't seem to like it as much as Relatively us. low. I mean, I, I like the film. I was engaged with it throughout, and, you know, Fincher does this kind of thing really well. Um, for me, it kind of boils down to two things. Fincher, for me, is a director who has always uh, made it a point to not repeat himself. And there were times this movie where I felt like, okay, well, this is sort of 70, and that's sort of Zodiac-y, you know. Um, and then the other thing, which may have to do with the book, which I have not read, um, is This felt, was a book? Uh, apparently so. <laughs> okay. One or two, one or two people have read it. Um, <laughs> what are books? <laughs> uh, I thought there were like four endings to this movie, and then a, oh, we're not really ending it because there's two more movies to come. I mean, you know, the absolute last ending, though, which is different from the Swedish original, mm -hmm. is so unsatisfying. Did you not, think? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the, yeah. The, the ending of this film. The absolute last it. shot. Chris is the yeah. only one who saw the Swedish one, so we, I we're, we were all newborn babies. I think, it's all, I, I think it's unsatisfying unless you know that there are more movies coming. And I mean, unless you're sort of already built into the... The, the the structure of the girl with dragon stuff that you know that yeah. that's that, that you know that there's more coming but if yeah. you see it on its own as if it's just the film that you're seeing this one time and you're not thinking about seeing the others later then I agree with you it was well, well the last Daniel Craig movie I saw that promised a sequel was the Golden Compass so mm. still waiting for no, those but, two movies but I agree with you that the, <laughs> and the the rhythm of the ending is really weird because as opposed yeah. to a standalone movie you get similar to what happens in the Dark Knight where you almost get 
like this half fourth act, right? Where mm. you get you get a big climax, and then it kind of keeps going in a weird right, so way. Like, so, so next week on the Girl yeah, with the Dragon exactly. Tattoo. That's what, that's what ruined the uh, the Dark Knight for us. Why I did not like the Dark Knight? I mean, nearly as much as anybody else. Why I left unsatisfied. Let's put it that way. But the rest of it, the vast majority well, yeah, of it, is pretty kick ass. Yes. Yes. Is yeah. terrific. Great to look at, really well acted, uh, very chilly, you know, and it's, it's a it's a cool who done it for those of us who don't know who done it. Mm -hmm. I, I, apparently, if, uh, yeah, I didn't know who done it. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. it was news yeah. to me. Um, who done yeah, did it? I, I was well, entertained by it. You know, it's interesting because having done some research, I haven't read the book, I haven't seen the original, but I do know that there are things that change in this. So if yes. you are familiar with the with the original material, you're still going to get some prize, some surprises here. Although, right, the order of things in which the times when people find things right. out is different. Right. Although right? I will say, you know, you can kind of tell who's going to be up to no good kind of based on the casting. Like, that, that I, that's, always, that's always a like, problem. No. Yeah. no, but I thought I, I, there it were there, any of them, No, I there, there were, yeah. I, I believed that it could be others. I mean, I and I agree with you that you could see it that way, but I, I still thought maybe because you know that twists are coming, that maybe they've casted against type and that they're going to double back on you that way. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to give anything away, but there's, right. you know, one person in here that you get cast, you're like, all right, well, you, you kind of know what kind of role this <laughs> now, person's going to be playing. One thing I want to throw out, now, I know Elizabeth Salander is like one of the most popular characters in modern literature, and all I have to go on is this movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't entirely buy her. Why not? Because on the one hand, she is this super heroine who is like, you know, can hack into anybody and break into any building and, you know, beat the living tar out of all these people. And then at the same time, we're supposed to buy this whole victim-y side to her, which granted, I'm sure there are, there are rape victims who are otherwise capable and independent women, but in the way this movie, that it's, it's not presented to me in a way where I bought her as a victim because I've, she'd been sold to me as this I, you why, I, I did buy it because I thought that the sort of the that the that there was an emotional shutdown from the, the the victimhood nature of her life, but then sort of and then and then excels in this field where there's really no contact with anyone, so mm. that they all sort of played off each other. This is what she's good at. She doesn't have to talk to anybody. She works alone. She does all this stuff alone. There's also this whole like teetering on the brink of insanity element of Lisbeth Salander that like you don't know if she's crazy or not. I mean, she's definitely damaged, but also definitely brilliant. And I I can see you putting the walls up, but also wanting to funnel her intelligence into this weird other way. Well, and I think, you know, it's interesting you bring up the idea of victimhood, because I feel like in a certain level, she, you know, does certain things that she's planning to set herself up as a victim because she's got an ulterior motive. And then things get farther right, than but, she but expected. But I'm the fact that she actually, we see her become victimized in the film. Yes, we do. And at that moment, I was like, but wait, she's, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Laura Croft with a Swedish accent. But like she suddenly, she gets her revenge, and it's no, no, she, she, she does, she yeah. does. But I just the fact that she becomes victimized at all didn't jive no, with I, me. I, I like for her because I think that there were things that continued to happen for her. That as smart as she is, the movie, the plot still throws her curveballs that she doesn't expect. Mm -hmm. Things sneak up on her, mm -hmm. and it's more about how she reacts to them. But she doesn't, you know, as much as she thinks she plans ahead and she she seems to be a step ahead, she really isn't. I, I make stuff up, I guess, all the time because yeah. I presumed that she had been victimized often no, before. As a child, right? I just sensed that this was not. Mm. That we are seeing perhaps the culmination and the worst act of this, but right. that this kind of thing, like she knew what was coming, and and we should say that 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 the, I, I thought both the, the the rape scene is really well done because it is really difficult to watch as a scene like that mm -hmm. ought to be without. Yeah. Being exploited without being or, without yeah, being right. like the last house on the left, where you're like, hey, see, you know, it's mm -hmm. horrible. Uh, and then I thought then then and then the revenge for that uh, attack is freaking splendid. Yeah. Well, a lot of this is faithful to what is in the Swedish original. I mean, Fincher mm -hmm. did not shy away from a lot of the really ugly stuff that that happens here in terms of Elizabeth's Elizabeth story and also the the serial murders that are going on that, right. that Daniel Craig is investigating. Like he does not shy away at all. Understandably. It's Fincher, but there's also, I think, a, a very sexy kind of sultry tone and a fluidity to the storytelling that, you know, it's two hours and 40 minutes long, so aside from the long ending, which we talked about, like, I don't think it feels no, it, that it, it, it moves yeah. beautifully. It, it zips by, yeah. And, and right. for whatever yes. qualms I have about, and, uh, you know, whether I'm nitpicking or not, ultimately, I did enjoy this right. film. I, I, I'm glad I saw it. I was entertained while I was watching it. 
but I think with with a director like Fincher, the bar is raised where right. you're expecting. No, I, I see, you know, and, and having read your review, when you talk about it kind of being like Fincher's greatest hits, you're absolutely right. You know, it's it's he's not he's not really breaking any new ground for himself here. Mm. You know, it it is elements of things we've seen before. It's very effective. It really works. It's a yeah. great yeah. marriage of material and director. But it's I think those are all that's interesting points about him not repeating himself. I just don't care. I, 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 I think, no, but I mean, I think you are like you're great. So repeat yourself. Like I mean, man, you do something well. Keep hitting, keep hitting. Eventually, you'll you're, knock that guy the, down. You're the play taking care of business guy. Totally. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let's go talk about the title sequence real fast. I think yes. we're all kind oh, of divided yeah. on whether it's great or not. Loved it. It's <laughs> rad and sexy. Because I want to explain it really, really fast. It, it, um, it's a divorce from the rest of the film, but it's awesome. It's not though. It kind of like sets the tone. Yeah, You've got keyboards and gothic stuff and leather and, and gnarly. Oil and, yeah. um, it's um, Karen O does this <laughs> cover of Immigrant Song right. and, and Trent Reznor, and it's just like this. Or is it a remix? It's both, yeah, right? I think it's more of a remix. No, but she's the, singing or, it though. She's, is she's she? Yeah. I want to say. sings it. I want to say something smart about this. Okay. But Dude. I don't remember it. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's, it's an immigrant <laughs> song and it's sped up yeah. and it's like a black gothic gnarly yeah, yeah. music just, video. It was yeah, it was into it. But then they got right. the, it like took a really long time. Like let's go. No. Let's start the two hour forty minute movie. But yeah. It is one of the. No, I thought it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. Okay. It should have been the Dread Zap on version though. I like the music. I, I will say, as I was complaining about before, like there's there's a riff that happens partway through the movie that is the piano riff from the end of Closer, mm -hmm. and I thought, come on, Trent Reznor. <laughs> That's a good riff, but do we have to get it again? Like, I come on. I thought the same thing. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't catch it. I, okay, uh, I didn't like it as much as you guys, but I liked it a lot. I, I'm going to say seven. 8.3, I loved it for a long time. I kind of hate the ending. Mm -hmm. uh, I really liked it. I, I think it's not perfect. I think that... It, it, the ending is a little weird, uh, but I give it an eight and a half. I give it an eight point two. It's totally solid. I think I love Julie Richardson. She's do, great. She's mm -hmm. great. She's great, and I want to at least get her mentioned. Yep. Uh, eight point two overall grade, an eight. I think we're all yep. we're all comfortable with yep. saying that uh, this is a movie you should go see. Even the, even our little friend Christy. Hello. <laughs> I like stuff. <laughs> even the hot <laughs> <laughs>